because if we esteem, it's what to perform. It's what you see oh, with your spirit eyes that God will esteem to perform. I am declaring to you that next level you want in your life, God will give it to you in the name of Jesus. He will give it to you in the name of Jesus. Because there's not, no impossibility with God. These are divine lifting. Someone was sick. The woman with the issue of blood or the woman that had problems. Hunched back for, for 18 years. And Jesus saw her and had mercy upon her. There was a divine lifting. And said, woman, thou art loose. And immediately she straightened up. That was it, now. So there was divine lifting there. It is my prayer. You, that story is in the book, Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 17. The woman, we, we dealt with it on Wednesday. The woman was on for 18 years. So it doesn't matter how long that situation has been. I have come as a mouthpiece of God today to tell you that your time of elevation has come. The time of your divine lifting has come because God himself will orchestrate situation to work together for your good in the name of Jesus. And it will put shame to your enemies in the name of Jesus. It was divine lifting for that woman. But do you know, consistently she was coming like Anna to the sanctuary. She was not saying people will laugh at me now because I can't look at people. It was a case of low self-esteem. It was a, a, a case of just looking down in shame. Couldn't look up. But when Jesus saw her in Luke chapter 13, he said, woman, that at loose. A prophetic word first came. Woman, that at loose. Then Jesus still laid his hand upon her and she straightened up. I want you to lay your hands upon your head. So say, Jesus, Holy Spirit, lay your hands upon me. That area that needs to be straightened up in my life. Father, Lord, straighten it. I do not know why I'm saying this. There's something you want God to do. Father, your word has come for but Lord, lay your hands upon me. Oh, Lord, lay your hands upon me. That thing, oh, Lord, that I need to be straightened up in my life, in my career, in my marriage, whatever it is, Father, straighten it up. Father, straighten it up. Father, straighten it up. The hands of God was upon Ezekiel. As it was upon Ezekiel, he gave a prophetic word and dry bones received life. Dry bones received life. I want you to pray. Father, today, start prophesying to your life that today, I prophesy, I call your name, that this situation in my life, I command to be restored. Oh yes, I want you to call forth those things that were not, as so though they were. I want you to start declaring as God puts his hand theoretically or symbolically upon you. I want you to start seeing what God is trying to do in your life. I want you to start calling forth, calling forth, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall come to pass I want you to decree, Lord, let your hands of mercy be upon me. Give me divine speed in this area. Whatever it is, heal me. Take away sickness. Take away dryness. Take away reproach from me in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. There's nothing impossible with you. As we come to meet with you, we know you will solve our problems. You know, David said in Psalm 62, verse 5 to 6, he said, my soul waits thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He's my defense and I shall not be moved. All those things that have been making you to move over the place, that has been confusing you, you do not even know your direction. Today, I bind that, uh, that spirit of uh, roller coaster in the name of Jesus. That Sokugo, we call it Sokugo spirit, wandering spirit. I bind it out of your life. You will be, your mind will be stayed on God in the name of Jesus. Because anyone that is unstable, how can God uh, lift the person up? You have to be stable. Hmm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, in the case of Esther... We are paraphrasing because we don't have time, so we paraphrase most of the things. An epa of destiny was there. So how do we take principles of divine lifting? God uses people to lift you. So he will speak to someone and they will lose their sleep because of you. In the book of Esther chapter 6, verse 10 to 11, 
when Amon, their enemy, planned for them. Esther chapter 6, verse 10 to 11. Planned for them that he was going to destroy the Jews. Mordecai has been a faithful man at the gates of the king's palace. You see, when God wants to lift you, he looks for what you have done to use it to lift you. He looks for it. Mordecai has been faithful in the king's courts, in the gates. When they planned, two men planned to kill the king, Mordecai knew about it. He didn't join, no someone. He didn't join the council of the ungodly. He decided to separate himself to report the matter to the king. And even when he did that, nobody recognized him, nobody remembered. But there came a time. That's why I know that time to favor you has come. Ah, you are not saying a good amen. The time to favor you has come. The time for the lifting has come. The time for the change of your story has come. Remember the enemy was planning gallows for them. But when the time of remembrance came, a remembrance book was opened. God needs what you have done to do, do, lift you up. Then the king said to Amon, first go to nine. Let me start from, uh, from one. One first, one. One. I was just, thus shall it be one. So that ninth could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. What happened? And it was found written that Mordecai had told, told of Betana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. What happened? And the king said, what honor if there's nothing done for him. Some of you have been in prayers, praying for people standing in the gap, standing praying for the church, standing for your nation. Some of you have done things to, you know, help humanity or help the church or help families. It's as if all the things you are doing, you are a worker in the house, nobody, you know, knows about it. But one thing I know, God is not unrighteous to forget your good work. Hebrews 6 verse 10. It's not unrighteous. He will replenish. He will pay you one day. He will see something to say, look, my daughter or my son at a time did this for me. A book was, record was opened. And what happened? The enemy that has planned gallows for this same man was the one that came. What a coincidence. It was the one that the king said, go now and, you know, take this man on the earth because everything you said concerning it Honor this man. And he did it. I pray for you and I that a book of remembrance will be opened for you. I pray for you and I that those good things you have done, God himself will repay you in the name of Jesus. The bad things you have done, God will have mercy upon you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, a book of remembrance was opened. God used this king to promote Mordecai. Towards the end of it all, we will see that Mordecai was very, uh, uh, was very, um, was next to the king, was promoted. So we can see that a case like this that favors. So what are the principles now? First, I said divine helpers will be on the way. You need divine helpers. Divine helpers. God will make those people to honor you. Meaning that you must have a relationship first with God so that God is able to make people to what? Help you. That's how it works. If you do not have relationship with God, how can God be speaking to people to help you? Except he wants to help you so that he brings you to himself because everything about lifting is to bring you back to God. That you will honor God with whatever he has done for you. Praise the Lord. Because the, the lifting of uh, Esther, the lifting of Mordecai brought about the safety of the Jews. They were not able to kill them any longer because of the lifting of Esther and uh, Mordecai. The second one is favor. You cannot outplay that. 
Three people will be in a place and they decide to favor someone. Why? Just because the oil of favor is on that person. How can you explain that Joseph, the uh, uh, second to last of uh, Jacob's children, was the one God showed a dream and said, your, your siblings will bow to you. It's all about favor. <laughs> it's all about favor. And God favored him. Because we saw that he also had a relationship with God. He don't follow his siblings to do the wrong thing. So we must station ourselves, position ourselves, so that when the oil of favor is flowing, it will flow upon you. That we arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Oh yes, the set time has come. Psalm 102, verse 13. So I pray for you and I that the time to favor you that that's, that thing you want, that job you want, that promotion you want, that thing that is a pain in you, God himself, because of favor, will bring to, bring to pass that your heart desire in the name of Jesus. It will bring to pass that your heart desire in the name of Jesus. 